Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. It's good to see all of you here on this Lord's Day as we come together in praise and in worship to be rooted again to the body of Christ and to one another. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. Uh, you will note in the bulletin today that our Lenten devotions, if uh, you are helping uh, write the Lenten devotions for uh, the devotions that we make for our church and for our community, they are due today. Uh, let Angela know of your progress if you aren't ready to turn that in today or email that in uh, so that she could have that. Also, uh, there's a new announcement there about the Pancake Supper that is on Tuesday, March the 5th. That's the, um, I think that's Mardi Gras, I think, uh, and it's from 5 to 7 in the Fellowship Hall. That is the youth are going to be giving that, and it is to help with uh, costs for Salkahatchee. And of course, if you talk about Mardi Gras, you've got to talk about Ash Wednesday, and that'll be uh, that following day. Uh, I believe the service is going to be at 6.30 following our dinner down in the Fellowship Hall. Friends, it's good to see all of you this Lord's Day. I invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Friends, I invite you to join me in our invocation. Let us pray. Spirit of truth, come down. Surround us in this place. Give us that rest, that freedom of spirit that we need after a busy week and a busy week to come. We pray, O oh Lord, that your blessings will be upon this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This time, I invite Tyler Brown to come forward and Nina Strobel with him for a report of the Committee on the Long Range Plan. They'll be coming up to the lectern microphone here. Thank you, guys. Morning, everyone. 
Um, back in late fall, I think it was, I came to y'all to talk to you about our long-range plan, um, the work we had been doing up to that point, and I informed you about the listening sessions that our committee had been having uh, throughout the summer so that we could get a good voice from the community about how our church is seen, um, so that we can get better direction about where we want to go in the coming times. Um, since that time, our committee has taken some more steps. Um, and we decided as a committee that it would be best to come to the church to let y'all know what we have done up to this point, where we're at, and what you can expect to see in the coming times. Um, since the last time I spoke to y'all, uh, we have established our mission statement and our vision statement, and we've also established some meetings. So I want to talk to you about each one of those things. As a starting point, we now have a vision statement that our committee has settled on uh, that we believe um, encapsulates what we want to operate under, and that is that Trinity United Methodist Church serves God and people from the heart of Sumter. Um, our committee worked over that over the course of two or three sessions uh, to get the language right, and it's one that we believe um, encapsulates how we as a church want to operate and how we want to do everything going forward. Um, that will work in conjunction with our mission statement, which is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Um, with that in mind, uh, we are now in the process where we are beginning to actually fully write out um, the long-range plan. It's a plan that we hope to bring to you by the tail end of May. That's the, um, that is the deadline that we've put on ourselves. Um, but before we get to that point, uh, we have one other thing that we were wanting to do, and that was to hear from y'all. Um, in the coming weeks, uh, actually starting today with the friendship class, various members of the long-range planning committee will be coming around to the Sunday school classrooms. Uh, we'll be sitting down with y'all. We'll be showing you our findings up to this point. Uh, we have a presentation prepared that outlines what we've heard from the community, what we've heard from various leaders, um, and, and kind of where we're at right now. And we're going to want to hear from y'all about what you want to see and what you see as priorities in this church. Uh, we certainly think that that's important for us to hear y'all's voices. So it's not just us going through this, but it's um, that we're going forward with all of y'all's thoughts. Um, these will these will very much so be more program-based, not bricks and mortar ideas in terms of what we want to do. Um, but we do want to make sure that we have the entire voice of the church. So friendship, if any of y'all are in here today, you'll be hearing from some of us today. And in the next couple of weeks, um, each Sunday school classroom uh, will be having various members of our committee come in. Um, if you can't make your Sunday school class um, meeting on March 20th, Wednesday night supper, I'll be holding one of these same sessions uh, for Wednesday night supper. And we also have a couple of other ones um, planned out. Um, but there should be a program, I think, next week in the bulletin that will outline exactly who's meeting when. Uh, we look forward to talking with you all. And at the end of May, uh, we will be bringing a full plan to the entire church. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Nina, for your work. Our committee has been prayerful about these things, and it's time for us to uh, work within that discerned vision, and uh, how will we live that out? Our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 37. Psalm 37. It's the first 11 verses, and I invite you to listen to read on the screen or in your Bible. Hear now the word of the Lord from Psalm 37. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light. And the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him do not fret over those who prosper in their way over those who carry out evil purposes refrain from anger 
and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little, a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy word of our Lord. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Grace. Let us pray. Abundant God, in this hour, with so much going on in the world, we ask your blessings upon us as we seek to do your word and your will. You know the state of our soul. You know what frustrates us and what angers us. And we pray in this moment you will meet those things and remove them from us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may hear it said every once in a while that the Bible doesn't really meet us where we are. It's not really about the things that we deal with. Well, I would encourage persons that want to say that to, to read Psalm 37. Because the psalmist is talking about everyday life. Life that you and I see out in the world. How many times do you shake your head, cluck your tongue, maybe even wag your finger at how the wicked seem to prosper, at how those out there get ahead in the wrong ways and they seem to be rewarded for it? How long do we have to wait to see injustice solved in the world? How long will unfairness rule? When are those people that do all these bad things and get ahead, get, a, get theirs? Lord, how long? The psalmist in this scripture today reminds us to trust God that God will take care of these things and sometimes that happens on a time frame other than our own and sometimes it happens through us and so we are told to wait on the Lord's vindication that is not to say that we sit back and do nothing. It means that we do work for justice in the ways that we can within our lives. A 
But as I read this scripture, this Psalm 37, there was one word that kept coming to my attention. One word that I think defines that angst that we feel. That word is fret. Fret, F-R-E-T, do not fret. Do not agonize or brood or mope or fume. Fretting is a spiritual thing, an emotional thing. And it is that that the, the psalmist is speaking to us about. The psalmist is talking about though there may be injustice out there, though there may be unfairness out there, though there may be all kinds of things wrong out there that the wicked seem to prosper and thrive and get theirs. And yet, the problem is not just out there. It's in here. Fretting can cause damage to us spiritually. Anger and hurt that we hold on to. As cancer is to the body, anger and hurt and fretting are to the soul. It's like battery acid that spills. Battery acid has a place inside the battery, but beyond. And so when we hold on to anger, when our anger at the outside world or those that have hurt us, those that have made us mad, when that anger gets caught inside of us, it is a cancer on our spirit. It is battery acid in our soul. There are doctors in the room and they can tell you all the physical manifestations of letting stress and anger and hurt turn inside. I could always tell when I'm under pressure when I go to the doctor and my blood pressure has inched up. We know that there are physical manifestations to holding on to anger, self-destructive behaviors, drugs, alcohol, food, gambling, pornography. All of those things begin to eat at our very bodies. Fretting is not good for your body. And it's not good for your spirit. Because the one thing that anger and hurt can do is crowd out love and it can crowd out trust. Especially when we hold on to anger. I have seen so many people that anger has crowded out love. It has crowded out everything good in their lives. Which is why the forgiveness of Joseph in the Old Testament book of Genesis is so amazing. You remember Joseph. If anybody had a right to be angry, if anybody had a right to carry a grudge, if anybody had a right to hold on to hurt, it was Joseph. Because his older brothers threw him down in the 
the sister and sold him into slavery and used, took his coat of many colors and took it to daddy and said, put blood on it and said that the wolf got him or the predators got him. Well, the predators did get him. It was the slave traders of Egypt. And for decades, he could have festered. He could have been angry and hurt. And that could have shut him off to what God was doing in his life. When Joseph faces his older brothers later and they, as they come to Egypt, it's interesting to see how he forgives them. They didn't believe that it was him and they didn't believe that he would forgive them, but he did. And forgiveness had been something that he had been doing every day of his life to keep anger, to keep hurt, from corroding his spirit, from eating away at his life. The psalmist says, do not fret. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. The Lord, all that we see out there in the world, the Lord will take care of that. But in the meantime, do not fret. Do not let that anger and hurt and loss be an asset on your soul or ruin your physical body. Every one of us has a hurt in our life. harm that someone brought to us. Every one of us has an anger at some injustice in the world. And so as we look at our lives, as we seek to be rooted again to God and one another, what is it that we need to let go of? What is that anger? What is that hurt? What is that harm that you need to let go? And how can trust in God be nurtured in you to remove those obstacles that cause you to fret? Sometimes what causes us to fret is not anger. Is grief. Grief over loss. Grief over death. What is it today that you carry around? I had a teacher one time who said that carrying around anger and carrying around hurt and carrying around grief and all those things was like trying to walk around with a 12-pound bowling ball in your hand underneath your arm. And everywhere you went, driving down the road, shopping for groceries, you carried that bowling ball. The good news is you don't have to carry that bowling ball. You don't have to carry that grief. You don't have to carry that hurt. Today, the power of Almighty God is available for you to free you. Have you ever cared to wait so long and then let it go and how wonderful and how light you feel? God is ready. God is ready today. Just as surely as God is ready to bring vindication and justice to the world, God is ready to remove 
the hurt, the heartache, the grief, the anger from your heart this day. Won't you let him? Won't you let him? What do you need to let go? Do not fret. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a response to the word of God proclaimed among us, let us recite the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning as we gather for prayer, Thank the Lord for a three-year-old who will tell you it's time to go home. Peyton is telling everybody it's time to go home. But unfortunately, there are things that they're still trying to work out. A little reoccurrence of the arrhythmia this past couple of days. But now she is off dialysis, so with increased function of her of various parts of her body they believe that they can get the mixture of medication
to deal with the arrhythmia. So let's pray for a little three-year-old as we've been praying for the past few weeks. Our hearts are also mindful of those from Crestwood High School this past week where three young people were involved in a very tragic accident. Not only did we pray for the parents and families of those three, but we pray for law enforcement and first responders who came to the scene. We also pray for teachers. Ms. Jackson, who comes and sings with us on occasion up here, was one of the teachers that um, is part of that school. So let us pray for district personnel and for friends that don't understand. When you're 15, you should be invulnerable. And a lesson was learned this week that we're not. Let us be mindful of our world and all of the problems from South America to other places where crime and hurt and hate thrive. We pray for our own state Supreme Court that has been meeting here in Sumter the past few days. Let's also pray for the United Methodist Church, the special conference, the special general conference, which is in session this morning in St. Louis. But let us also be mindful of what's making us fret. Our fear, our hate, our hurt, our grief. I invite you to spend a few quiet moments with Almighty God. Prayers in which I invite you to search your heart and ask God to guide you in that search and that God remove those things that caused you to fret. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, how great it would be if we could just flip some internal switch inside of us and not feel uncomfortable, not feel feel ill at ease or bad. Oh, Lord, our God, There is no switch that we can throw. But by your grace and mercy, O Lord, you can guide us day by day to look into the mirror of our souls where sin and where grace compete, where hurt and anger and love wrestle. Help us, O oh Lord, to let go of the things that we need to release. 
that we may be made stronger in you. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. And help us to forgive others as you forgive us. Let us not drink the poison of hate, O Lord, expecting others to fall ill. Because it is only ourselves that we hurt and harm. Hear our prayers for our community, for our church, for one another. These things we ask in your name, O Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now will our ushers please come forward for the dedication of our tithe and offering. give thanks to you for all that you do. We know, O oh Lord, that our gifts in and of themselves are never enough. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will use these gifts by your grace and mercy, that you will multiply them so that all may know of your loving kindness. May we think a little less of ourselves and think a little more of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace like 
It is our hope that you leave this place with peace and joy and love in your hearts and in your souls. And that as you leave this place to face an uncertain world, a world that would rob you of that joy, that you will remain strong in the peace of the Savior. Go now in that peace and in that joy and in that love. Go to be the church, to be the person God called you to be. Go now in peace. Amen.